Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studio for a CUBE conversation. Again, we love talking with little companies, emerging companies, kind of maybe technology you haven't heard of before. And we're excited to have our next guest because he's right in the heart of security space, which is always a hot topic, continues to be a hot topic, and will will never go away because the bad guys, they just keep working hard to, to try to break everything that we, we create. So our next guest is Ambush Kumar, the co-founder and CEO of Fertanix. Ambush, welcome. Thank you, Jeff. So give, uh, for the people who aren't familiar with Fortanix, kind of the basic uh, 101. Yeah, so if you look at all the security today, um, it, it falls into three categories. One is protecting your data at rest. So what that means is, if somebody steals your laptop, how do you protect your hard drive from um, getting exposed? Right. So we use encryption for that. Similarly, we also use encryption to secure our data in use. So we connect to some bank website, and our data goes encrypted through TLS. And so what that means is if somebody is doing wiretapping, uh, our data remains protected. However, once the applications start to run, in whether it's in your data center or public cloud, then the data and applications remain exposed. So to fix that runtime vulnerabilities, what industry has done, done so far is to secure the infrastructure, try to secure the infrastructure. And that is $80 billion per year um, industry. But we have failed to do that because infrastructure is just so vastly complex. So what we do is we use something called runtime encryption. And the idea is that your data and applications remain encrypted. So even when people who are running your cloud, they are untrusted and they want to get your data, they can't do anything with it. So a lot of stuff there to unpack. So first off, yeah, we know we know the perimeter systems yeah. don't work anymore. Yeah. I mean, you got to put them up. They do some some level of stuff, but you can't you can't secure the perimeter anymore. So yeah. it is all this kind of working your yeah. your security and yeah. the encryption all the way through the process. But this is pretty interesting. I've never heard of encryption actually at runtime, and it begs a question: Well, how does how does the microprocessor run the encrypted data? That's right. So, so it's a uh, long um, research problem in, in security. People have been working on something, something called uh, fully homomorphic encryption. And the idea is that, can I take my program encrypted, data encrypted, and run in totally untrusted environment and give you the result that you can decrypt? Turns out that you can do that for very simple programs, like if you are adding some numbers, multiplying those numbers, and even in those cases, it's slow by many orders of magnitude. So what normally some operation takes one second, now it will take three years. Um, not good. Not, not good. <laughs> so, so, so what we do is we use some new instructions from Intel called Software Guard Extension, Intel SGX. And um, your, your data and your programs, they get decrypted in a secure region of CPU. So all the memory, all the operating system, accessible things, anything that can be touched by any other process, they only can look at encrypted stuff. Your data gets decrypted right when instructions are working on them, and at that point, it is accessible only to your right process. Right. So we use this hardware um, capability to accelerate the encryption decryption, so we can provide all the benefits of fully homomorphic encryption at a performance that is totally acceptable to our customers. So, make sure I understand. So it just, it decrypts it literally at the last possible, obviously not yeah. second, but <laughs> last possible in microprocessor time yeah. cycle. Yeah. Runs that process, and then is right only to the output of that process. And is that immediately encrypted again on, exactly. the, on the right side as well? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so you mentioned the Intel, the Intel instruction set. So is this relatively new, the SGX? Yeah, so we were first vendor, vendor to commercialize Intel SGX. So it's a new technology, but it's coming in all their CPUs. So right now it's in all client CPUs and some of the data center CPUs. But five years from now, um, all the CPUs that you will get from Intel will hopefully have this technology. Right. So obviously Skylake, right? They're yeah. Big, yeah. Big Skylake has it, and all, all, all newer architecture. Wow. So, how, so a little bit more about the company. How long have you guys been around? How long have you been working on this problem? You know, funding. Kind of give us a, the overview on the company. Yeah. So I have been working on encryption for the last seven years. Um, the company was founded two years ago. Okay. And we were funded by some well-known security VCs, including Foundation Capital and Neo Tri Ventures. Okay. Um, we are uh, widely recognized as the pioneer in this field that we are creating runtime encryption, recognized by Gartner as school vendor. Uh, we came number two in RSA Innovation Sandbox among hundreds of security companies. We have several S&P 500 customers already. Um, so where we are deployed in their production environment, we are securing trillions of dollars of assets in real time. Um, our goal is to convince CIA to run their most precious, most sensitive applications 
on some untrusted cloud in some enemy country. <laughs> So it's a long shot. Are they doing like a POC of, of something like that with them? Um, I mean, are you an active conversation or is that more I, kind of a philosophical goal? I cannot confirm or deny that, okay, but, that but that's our goal. And until we achieve that, uh, we, have, we have something to keep working on. Okay. And then, and then where do you guys sit kind of in the world of, of public clouds with, with uh, AWS and Azure and, and Google versus um, either private or, or uh, uh, well, multiple clouds inside the company, or you know some of these other kind of options like we we hear like the Equinix, which I think is one of the places that you yeah. guys play. How's that yeah. work? So our goal is to decouple security from infrastructure. So so in the end, our goal is that infrastructure will provide you compute cycles, and the security will come from the customers and customers who are developing the applications, deploying the applications. Right. So it's cloud agnostic security. So means meaning that we will go after on-prem customers, we'll go after public cloud, colo, and all of that. Right. So in the meantime, for our go-to-market, what we did was we partnered with two of uh, really well-known strong forces in the industry. One is IBM Cloud, yep. where IBM is putting these servers and running our technology. And with Equinix, which is world's largest data center provider. And so if you are in any of the public cloud, if you are in IBM Cloud, you get our um, security by default. So your containers will run in encrypted, right. isolated from all the threats that might be there. Or if you are in some other public cloud, um, you can use Equinix Colo. So if you have some application that you don't want to be hacked, you can use our SaaS service to run those applications encrypted. Right, and of course Equinix has got the direct connect to all the public cloud, yeah. so minimum latency and yeah, really integration with all with all of your other stuff in the public yeah. cloud. Yeah, exactly. So, what is, so what's the expense, uh, both kind of the overhead expense on the computing side to do this when it's done properly, and then what's the expense um, to run this? Is this, is this something that, is, is, is expensive, can only be used for the most uh, critical applications, or do you see this over time being more general purpose execution? So it's, it, will be, um, it will be used to secure anything that you don't want to be hacked, and the cost of using runtime encryption is minimal, so I expect it to be widely um, adoptable, adopted, um, and we make it really easy for developers and um, security organizations to use this technology. Mm -hmm. So you have to bring in your container, and then Photonix process attaches to your container. You don't need to recompile your source code. We never get to look at your source code. Um, there is no binary translation, nothing like that. And then, uh, so it's a simple millisecond uh, long process, and then we give you a modified container. And now you can take this modified container run on any cloud you want. And if it runs, it runs securely that point onwards. Right, and today you just have to make sure it's got the right microprocessor in yeah. the future. Hopefully that'll be more general Everywhere. purpose. Yeah. All right, yeah. so what's next? What are you working on? What's a priority for the balance of 2018? Yeah, so we have um, uh, lots of integration work going on. So uh, VMworld is coming next week. Uh, we have uh, support for something called KMIP uh, that allows you to secure your storage boxes, vSAN, et cetera, with Fortanix. Um, now we are also running um, integration with some databases, some multi-party uh, uh, compute and things like that. So our goal is to make our technology more uh, widely available to a large variety of customers. All right, well, Ambush, very interesting story, encryption at runtime. So yeah. we uh, look forward to watching the story unfold. Awesome, yeah, this is a um, decade-long journey, and I think when we are done, infrastructure security will, will be irrelevant. So it's going to be very exciting for, for all the parties involved. All right, well, we'll keep an eye. Thanks for uh, stopping by. Thanks. All right, Thanks I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studios. See you next time. Thanks for watching.